This is the Jeff Santos Show. Uh, there was this report about 300,000 uh, that were held up by a federal court, um, you know, that, that were supposedly in big Democratic cities, Detroit, Milwaukee, et cetera. What are the remedies here, if you can, uh, in, in these states? Because, they, you know, um, Arizona has been called by Fox for, for uh, Mr. Biden. Florida has been called by Fox for Donald Trump, which I expected anyways, because that's about the most corrupt state there is. Um, yep. But... Where are we in these other places? Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, PA. Ohio, uh, I, I think forget Ohio because, as you say, they've got the trifecta of the, the Republicans. Right. And, uh, and they wiped out nearly one million voters. It's just breathtaking what they did in Ohio. And, and also, like, for people to understand the tricks that they pulled. And in, I have my, you know, in my book, How Trump Stole 2020, I go back where Ohio – allows only one voting station per county for early voting when most African Americans, 70% of African Americans in Ohio vote early. They have one polling station. People talked about one drop box per county in Texas. <coughs> Don't imagine. That's easy. You just stick, the, the, you just stick it in a, a box. But in Ohio, for example, one polling station for Cleveland, one polling station for Dayton. I was in Dayton, <coughs> waited five hours on a Souls to the Polls Sunday, five hours, because they had one polling station. And then you go out to Toledo suburbs, and I want to see how long the lines were there. There were no lines for the white suburbs, zero. Five hours in the black communities, zero in the white communities. That's the tricks that they're playing. Forget Ohio. They've, they've come up with every trick you could ever imagine. You can't win it fair. You can't win it. Not, you have to overwhelm the steel, which can be done. Michigan, they'll take Michigan. The Democrats... Screwed up Michigan bad last time, and they, it would take a lot to lose that one. Um, but then we Wisconsin. have Wisconsin, where I'm quite sure that, that the Democrats will take it. And there, there was tremendous work by the uh, African-American Democratic Party, by Lieutenant Governor Barnes. Uh, they, they expanded the number of polling stations instead of crushing them. They really did an amazing job, all things considered, despite the very hostile Republican state legislature and a hostile Republican controlled state Supreme Court. Just a, so I just a minute left here. What about Pennsylvania? Win. Whoa, I don't know. Uh, my uh, guy, Zach Roberts, is fly, is is in the air on his way there now. We think that there's going to be violence in Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. Oh, That's geez. the only way that I think Trump can take it is by stopping the vote through violence. Wow. Well, Greg, <laughs> you, was, you have given us an honest uh, a viewpoint here, but one that is still, you know, uh, has uh, uh, Joe Biden potentially getting to 270. Uh, and uh, yeah. you take Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, and I still think from what we talked about with Scott Wallace today, the grandson of Henry Wallace, uh, he still believes mm -hmm. that the Pennsylvania votes are there. So you win those three, uh, that should get him to 270. But it's been much too close for a lot of people yeah. and. Uh, but we appreciate it, and I think votes. it's important. <laughs> yeah, you got to count those votes, don't you? Uh, Greg Palast, uh, right here on the Jeff Santos Show, folks. Greg, thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, for staying up late See with us. Uh, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, folks, we're going to come back. We're going to talk to Alan Grayson, uh, who was on a little bit earlier today. Uh, he will be with us, and then Mark Taylor Canfield uh, coming up after that. It's the Jeff Santos Show. Half an hour to go. Hang in there, folks. Not over till it's over. Right back. Situation correctly in Pennsylvania, they weren't allowed to start counting until the polls closed, which That's is correct. kind of crazy when you think about it. Yes. Um, in Florida, we, you're able to count as soon as the, as the ballots come in. And, and I also heard uh, that uh, de that the party affiliation of those votes to be counted in, in Philadelphia is 16 to one Democratic. Uh, so it's pretty clear whose votes those are. Um, the, the numbers lined up almost entirely in Florida based upon. Uh, party affiliation when you look at the votes that came in before Election Day. So what we have to do is make sure that every vote counts, uh, that every vote gets counted and every vote counts. Uh, we have to win at least, Mich it looks like at this point, we have to win at least Michigan uh, and we have to win Pennsylvania to win the election as a whole. We probably will have to win Wisconsin, but Arizona, some may offset Wisconsin in terms of electoral votes. So we might or might not have to win Wisconsin. That depends upon what happens elsewhere, particularly in Iowa. But we, it's pretty clear at this point that Michigan and 
Pennsylvania are going to determine the outcome of this election. Uh, both of them count rather slowly. Wisconsin also counts very slowly for the same reason, uh, because they don't count mail-in ballots until Election Day. We have to protect the vote. I tweet out earlier today that it's the responsibility of local police forces to make sure that there's no interference. Here in Florida, we had the Brooks Brothers riot in 2000 that clearly affected the outcome of the election. A, a bunch of, of Republicans uh, re- when it forced their way into a, a place where ballots were being counted in Miami and shut the place down. Uh, we can't let that happen anywhere in the country. And in particular, we can't let that happen in Pennsylvania and uh, in Michigan. So that's what it seems to be coming down to. Trump is winning states he has to win uh, in order to be in the running, states like Florida, for instance. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to protect the vote in those places that are counting slowly because of the COVID crisis or just because of their state quirkiness uh, uh, and, how they, and how they set up electoral laws. That's where we are now. That's what has to happen. You can count on Trump to do everything he possibly can to interfere. Um, every lawsuit must be met by a counter lawsuit. Uh, every, every vote has to be fought for. And, and that's the situation that we're in. That's where we are right now, just like we were in the year 2000. We can't give up. We have to show fortitude. Uh, we have to fight to make sure that people's votes count. Do you think that we will know who the next president is in the next week, or will it go beyond that? Your guess. Oh, yeah. By law, Pennsylvania has to count its vote, I believe, I believe by Friday. I'm not sure about that. Um, and as a practical matter, given modern technology, they scan these votes. It's not like people have to sit down and record them by hand anymore. Uh, they, apparently, they, in Philadelphia, they can count 10,000 an hour. It's not going to take forever in order to get these things done uh, by Friday um, or before Friday. Uh, we should know who's going to win Michigan and who's going to win uh, Pennsylvania and who's going to win in Wisconsin. And that's the answer. We'll know Michigan fairly early in the week. Um, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania will take longer. And uh, unfortunately, with uh, 40% of the country paying way too much attention to Fox News, we could end up in a situation where um, it's going to be too close to call, even though Biden will once again uh, sweep the popular vote. Uh, yeah. We could be in a situation where Biden wins nationally by five, six, seven points, uh, given the California results, New York results, and so on, um, and, and Texas being so close. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the rules are that you have to win the Electoral College, and uh, that's going to come down to two or three states. Yeah, and we got to get rid of it. I mean, I know it takes time. We talked to Ray Buckley today in New Hampshire about this, and you know, you got to be able to have all the the uh, you know eyes dotted and the t's crossed to do it. But I think there's no other way because th- this is just going to continue to go on and on and on. And you know, we're we're waiting for you know the Alabama of Pennsylvania to decide you know who the next president is. I, I think it's insane. Um, but hey, um, I appreciate it, Alan. Uh, we're all exhausted. We'll talk to you in the next couple of days. We could use your legal counsel. The Democratic Party could, too. Uh, thank you, my friend. I uh, appreciate you coming back on on a late night. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go out to, uh, to the great city of Seattle, which uh, has already been called uh, the state of Washington, that is, uh, for uh, the... Uh, the Democrats to Joe Biden. And, of course, uh, you hear that guitar because uh, he's not only a great uh, journalist, but he is a fantastic musician. Our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield with his uh, acoustic guitar in the background. I know, Mark, I told you that the Democrats are going to win tonight. I didn't think it would be this close, however. Uh, and, again, Joe Biden is in the lead. How are you, man? You hanging in there? Well, uh, man, I've got to play some music or something. It's crazy. It, my day started really early this morning with a TV appearance, and it hasn't stopped for a minute since. So it's been kind of crazy trying to cover this all day long on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and then trying to help Democracy Watch News' coverage. Um, as far as what's going on here, I mean, there is some good news in that um, – <sighs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you know, um, Ilhan Omar, a lot of the real firebrand progressives have won re-election for Congress. And also in a place like Washington State, our governor has won re-election handily, Pramila Jayapal, and the 7th uh, Congressional District has won handily again. 
You've got um, Bob Ferguson, <clears throat> our attorney general, who's a hero for a lot of people across the country, is winning handily. Yeah, he was um, on the Muslim got, uh, ban. He got, he got involved in that, correct? Yes. And then there's also some people who we haven't talked about before, but um, Nicole McCree, she's, uh, she's a 37th District Legislative Representative in Washington, and she's really a, a very competent uh, politician who I think has a huge future and would be great in the U.S. Congress. So keep an eye out for her. She, everybody turns to her. You know, the Stranger magazine actually did a really good kind of voters uh, guide. And one of the things they mentioned about her was that when they interviewed other candidates, they all sort of referred to her as, well, she, you know, Nicole has a plan. Yeah, Nicole has some legislation. So I think she's uh, got a, definitely got a future. Now, we were participating in the 43rd Legislative District Election Night online party earlier. Um, but considering that things are sort of undecided, uh, I wasn't sure how to handle my coverage in terms of, you know, g going out on the street and covering celebrations or protests or whatever. So it's kind of up in the air, you know. Yeah. Well, um, let me let me ask you, Mark, because we got a little time left here and we're going to sign off at midnight here, Eastern time. It's so nine o'clock almost uh, in uh, in the West Coast. Um, one of the things that we've been hearing, and we tried to reach out to our good friend, uh, Mr. Blake today, Justin Blake, the uh, uncle of uh, Jacob Blake, who was, of course, shot many times, still in a hospital bed uh, in, in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And, you know, we're talking with Greg Palace, and he was concerned. I know you've interviewed him as well. And that, of course, is the concern of violence, particularly in Philadelphia. And I know you've covered a lot of the police uh, brutality concerns in Seattle and in Portland. Uh, I, I just think that this is going to be these next few days is is, is trying to keep the peace. Uh, you know, one of the things that's coming out of the Biden campaign and uh, information coming out from their communications director, uh, take a deep breath. We're going to win this thing. It's just going to take a lot longer. But as people wait uh, and America is not, you know, a very patient country, um, you know, there could be more violence. And, you know, I know you have been in the streets, and I hope you don't have to go out uh, over the next couple of days because it's it's still pretty uh, dangerous out there. Um, but what can you tell us? Because you have, have heard the stories. You've seen people that you've interviewed later, you know, get killed. Um, give us a little example of, of what not to do uh, if you are a, a legitimate, democratic, progressive protester. Well, I mean, I think there are a lot of people who prey on the idea of trying to incite violence. So anybody who is uh, a victim of that, you know, or gets drawn into that is kind of adding to the escalation. So I think de-escalation is the main thing all the time. And I haven't heard um, of any reports at the moment of anything going on. Uh, I think... People are just kind of, you know, waiting to to see what the situation is going to be like. Uh, so I would say, you know, just keep cool heads, keep a cool head. I mean, there, there are, like I said, there are some successes that people can point to in terms of uh, progressive movements across the country, and just relax and let it take a little t take a little bit of time. I mean, these are the things that everybody is t is talking about, you know, right now, and. Uh, I don't know what more to say, Jeff. It's a very interesting time. I would like to, uh, you know, just um, tell people to be cautious and be smart and, you know, stay calm and peaceful. That's uh, that's what we got to do. Well, there's there's uh, <laughs> that's great advice, and I think that for a lot of people, um, you know, we need to, uh, you know, keep people calm. Because it's unfortunate, uh, but um, you know the the folks today um, can get very discouraged. Uh, we have a few of our contributors and a couple of our uh, our callers, you know, that are you know very very frustrated and very uh, depressed right now. But I, I think that you have to sort of 
remain cool in, in this situation and again let the process you know take itself out i i would not be surprised if these court cases last in, in, until 2000 like it did in 2000 when in december i don't know if it's going to go well, to the we... supreme court but um but I, I i do believe that you know that this this goes to show you that i think the democratic party has to be able to communicate better uh, to the average American. And it gets back to the need for progressive voices like this show and others. Because if, if they don't have yeah. voices, you know, amplifying what they're about, then you're never going to be able to win over non, uh, you know, low information voters, people who don't vote on, on a general, uh, you know, on an everyday level. And and to me, that's going to be the key here. Even if Biden does pull this out, which I believe he still will, that's going to be, a, I, I think, a big, big key going forward. Well, a couple of things. There are some businesses in Seattle, and I was, I did get out today. I actually voted today, and I waited till the last minute just because I liked the, the, the kind of ritual of voting. And I did take my uh, ballot to a drop box, and there were people there from the King County Elections Commission just kind of watching the drop box and making sure everything was safe and they uh, actually gave me a sticker saying I voted, and I filmed myself voting. Um, but I noticed that there were businesses around the area that had their windows all boarded up, and so they obviously are a little bit nervous. Um, but, you know, in Seattle, first of all, and in Washington State, we are used to, at least I am, especially covering as a journalist, I'm used to very long elections that take a long time. First of all, whenever you have mail-in voting, which is the way we vote in Washington State and in Oregon now, um, it always takes a while to count all the votes. And so we always know that we probably won't know the night of the election who's actually won. You also have two very uh, tight races between Republican uh, Dino Rossi and Christine Gregoire, the Democrat. Now, she, uh, Gregoire actually was able to pull, the, pull out both victories both times, but it went into the courts. There were right. numerous recounts. It went on for weeks and weeks. We also saw Shama Sawant, our city council member, the Alternative Socialist Party member, who uh, on the night of the uh, election, uh, I think both times in her re-election, two people were seeing, you know, some of the media was actually reporting that she had lost. And by, you know, within a few days, she won. Andrew Lewis, same thing. Uh, Rachel's protege here in Seattle, he was supposedly losing his election the night of uh, the, the, his election party, but he seemed very confident that night, and I couldn't figure out why. Why? Because within a couple of days, they counted a lot of the mail-in votes, and he had won. So we're used to that here. It's not a big surprise. I think it just maybe confuses people in terms of how to cover story, yeah. especially no, journalists, because I, I we're not that, sure that, what that's going to have to be a, a big part of it, Mark. Hey, uh, we're going to we're going to uh, sign off here with you. Uh, be safe, my friend. Uh, and uh, and and if you do have to go out again, you know, wear all the, your protective gear that you have to do so. Uh, and you can follow Mark, of course, at Democracy Watch News. Uh, and uh, of course, you can hear him every Tuesday and he will return next Tuesday at his normal time, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. Uh, all the best, my friend. Yeah, go to uh, my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll see some of the videos that we were doing today. Take care, Jeff. Rock on. Yeah, keep on. Keep the keep the fight, my friend. We will uh, prevail. Uh, it may take a couple of days, though. Uh, folks, uh, I just want to uh, spend the last couple of minutes here. Um, first of all, um, you know, thank Ron Kreider for this amazing work today. We were on the air for for seven hours. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 3 to 6 uh, Eastern time, uh, looking to sort of put an analysis on all of this. Um, I'm going to be trying to get uh, a good friend, Bob Massey, who is running for Democratic state chair, and how this uh, whole thing fills out for progressives. Again, a very big night for a lot of Latinx, a lot of young uh, Latinos. Um, I think that uh, millennials as a whole came out big time. Uh, there's just a number of things here, folks that um you know that you can point to for a good future and the question is is that can you get through this voter suppression uh can you get through uh you know a uh still elements of the of the democratic party um and my hope is that you know biden wins and he has to move uh you know aggressively to the left um and bring in the bernies and the warrens and the aocs and others 
Um, and if he does that, I think he'll be a very successful president. If he doesn't, well, then we'll be right back to where we started again, and maybe even worse, as some have predicted, uh, Donald Trump with uh, a friendlier face, a younger spirit, uh, but just the same uh, draconian policy. So uh, we uh, sign off tonight with the idea that, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin uh, may be the determinative factor in who's the next president. Uh, I still believe that Biden will win, but this thing may take a long time, folks. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk to Larry Corbin, Brian Garvey on the on the whole idea of whether this thing gets out of hand. I don't think it will. Uh, and at the same time, I think that we also, um, you know, need to uh, put faith in, in a lot of the Democratic leaders that were elected in 2018. Uh, Evers and uh, the Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor Mondella Barnes, uh, Miss Whitmer and, and 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 the Secretary of State there in Michigan, uh, of course uh, uh, Wolf and the Attorney General and the Secretary of State Shapiro. These are good people. These are good Democrats. Uh, they are not going to be um, bullied into uh, you know allowing uh, the Republicans in those states and and Trump uh, to sort of uh, stop the vote. Or, or, or whatever. So hang in there, folks. This uh, this will be continue tomorrow. We'll be back uh, at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and, and, and we'll find out a little bit more tomorrow in Pennsylvania, according to Mr. Shapiro. Uh, there's probably going to be uh, some announcement uh, on the 4th, which, of course, is tomorrow. And uh, we will continue uh, on the Jeff Santos Show to bring you as many guests uh, who have a understanding of um, this whole process, we'll be back tomorrow, folks. Again, I want to uh, I want to thank uh, Ron Kreider for giving us the opportunity to to put this on the Air and Revolution Radio Network. Um, and again, we'll be coming to you tomorrow live uh, at three o'clock p.m. Uh, with a lot of guests. We're going to try to and reach our good friend uh, Governor Dukakis and get his perspective on all this. He went through it in 1988. Keep on fighting, folks. My name is Jeff Santos, and I gotta go.